I'm going to use this cube and a mirror to explain how quantum entanglement works and why it is so challenging for us. In this example, you can think of primary colors as positive and the rest of colors as negative. And the cube is not always sorted, so we're always going to take a look at squaring the center. You see, that's beautiful. Uh, I left that cube over there on Earth. You can clearly see it. And the entangled cube is over here on Jupiter. And entanglement works just like that. If you measure on the same axis here in the center, if this color is blue, over there on Earth, let's see, the color in the center is green. So it's always a primary or a non-primary color. We see the one over there on Earth. It's a primary color here in the center. It's white. It's a non-primary color. That's the magic of quantum entanglement. So you see here on Jupiter, it's a non-primary color in the center or over there on Earth. Ah, look at that. It's a primary color and it's an instantaneous change. And that's how quantum entanglement works. A few years ago, someone tried to explain phenomena like telepathy or precognition saying, maybe this is like quantum entanglement. You know, the relationship is so fast across vast distances that it's supposed to be faster than light itself. It's so fast that it can go back in time to the past, which will explain things like people dreaming into the future. Or it's so instantaneous that it could explain things like people looking at, at things that are at a distance, you know, through, through entanglement. And the refutation goes something like this. You can't really, you can't really encode a message because you don't know what you're going to get every time you measure a spin. So you cannot create messages, like binary messages, like one, zero, zero, one, zero, and send them. This is the non-signal theorem. But we're not saying that humans are encoding messages when, when it comes to telepathy or clairvoyance. We just say it must be something like the cubes themselves. Maybe there is something like that. And that's why the non-signal theorem does not apply as an ontological argument. In summary, reality is weird, has these magical effects. We humans cannot encode message, messages uh, through that magic, but that magic is still there. But doesn't this weirdness at the quantum level at least open the door to the possibility of a lot more weird kind of macro level stuff? It does. And I think this is where our earlier conversation about wanting to understand how something mm. happens.